Okay, these are special systems of equations. These I would solve exactly the way I have done before, except you may end up with something happening. Your variables may cancel, or they may not. We'll find out, okay? So for example, if here, these are already opposite signs and they already have the same coefficient in front. So I would have combined those right away, giving me 8x equal to 16. I would have divided by 8. And so this problem is exactly like all the others where we found a value. If I go back in and I plug that 2 in, we get that y equals 0. So the point where it intersects is 2 comma 0. Totally normal what we've seen before. However, over here you notice that the x's are already the same sign and the opposite sign. Same number and opposite signs. So these would cancel. But these would also cancel, leaving me with 2 on the left hand side and 2 plus 0 is 2 on the right hand side. As long as this is a true statement, okay, the left side does in fact equal the right hand side, then um, you would say that this has an infinitely many solutions. And if you do that or you select that option, it's going to ask you, well, okay, remember, infinitely many solutions means that these two are the exact same line. What is that line? So what you do is you take one of the equations, I'm picking the top, but it really doesn't ma matter, and solve for y. Because they're supposed to be the same equation. So it wouldn't matter which one you used, you should still get the same answer if you do everything correctly. So this is the equation where all my solutions are gonna land, okay? And so that's why it asks you for that. However, if you have a different case, let's say you have this particular problem. Um, you have this particular problem. I would try to do the same thing as I've done before. I would want the variable to have the same number in front and opposite signs. But I do have a fraction in this particular problem. So the first thing I would have done is multiplied by the common denominator to hopefully get rid of that fraction. And so 3 times this, 3 times this, and 3 times this. This is the equation I end up with. If I write the top equation right underneath it, you'll notice that it's already set up for the variables to eliminate. Unfortunately though, the left side eliminates the x's and the y's are eliminated, which means there's nothing left on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, if I combine those, I end up with 10. Now this is not a true statement like that one. This is a false statement. 0 does not equal 10, ever, okay? That means that there is no solution. So now you have a case of where everything happens. If you still end up with variables left over after you do the elimination part, you're going to have a solution, one solution. If your variables all wipe out and you end up with the true statement here, left side equaling the right side, then you have an infinitely many solutions. And if you do the elimination and you end up with a false statement where the left side does not equal the right side, then that is the case where you have no solution as an answer.